Did you know that Lightroom Classic has an AI upscaling tool? It's true. So if you have a low res file or maybe you drastically cropped an image, this hidden Lightroom feature will double the resolution of your file. But will this upscale tool degrade your image and lose detail in the process? Well, let's find out. Hello, I'm Chris Parker with ParkerPhotography.com. And if you're ready to upscale in Lightroom, let's do it. All right, so activating the upscale tool in Lightroom Classic is pretty easy once you know where it's hidden. So the first thing we need to do is select an image, or if you want to batch process, you can select multiple images to upscale at the same time. I'm just gonna go ahead and select this image right here, which is of a prothonotary warbler that I captured a few days ago. And if we take a look at the original size here, you can see that the warbler straight out of camera is very far away. So I wanted to crop in tighter to remove some of those distractions around him and to get a better view of the warbler itself. And that resulted in a very, very tight crop and a resolution of 1419 by 946. So a very teeny tiny file that is going to be very hard to get a five by seven print from this resolution. So I wanted to upscale the image in order to get a larger print. And with super resolution, we can double the size of the file. So once we're done upscaling, it will be over 2,800 pixels wide. Now, real quick, this image here, I've already upscaled and it's three times larger at 4,200 pixels wide. So how did I do that if Lightroom only allows you to double the size? Well. I'm going to reveal that at the end. So to upscale your image or to begin the process of upscaling, we're going to right click and select enhance. It's going to bring up this new enhance preview window and it's going to also provide two additional options for enhancing your image. So this one right here in the middle, raw details will be selected by default. And if we hover over the information box, it's gonna tell us what it does which is it improves details and reduces artifacts in most raw files. And I emphasize most because it's not going to work on all raw files. If you shoot with a Fuji camera that has an X-Trans sensor or a camera with a Bayer sensor, it's going to improve your raw files or enhance them. But if you're not sure what type of sensor you have, you can go ahead and leave this turned on. It's not going to hurt the file. Now up here we have denoise. So this is the new AI denoise tool that was introduced in Lightroom recently. And it's going to use artificial intelligence to remove that noise. And I have a complete tutorial on how this tool works in the description below. So check out that tutorial after this one to learn more about the AI denoise tool. But for the purposes of this video tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on just to show you what happens when you do and that is we can no longer select super resolution. So the reason why is when Lightroom processes your image to remove the digital noise, it has to convert it to a new file format. And you can see that right here, it says it's going to be saved as a new DNG file. And because of that, we can't use super resolution since it too needs to convert it to a new DNG file. So it's either one or the other. If you're not familiar with DNG files and you wanna learn more about them, I do have a video tutorial on them. Again, that link is in the description below. All right, so since we are working on upscaling our images, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. So again, you have to decide what is more important, removing digital noise, or upscaling. So in this case, we want to upscale and we can still remove noise after the fact. And I'm gonna show you how to do that once we apply this enhancement. So to see the effects of super resolution, you can click on the preview window here to see the before. And once we release, that's the after. So you can definitely see the detail is preserved. In fact, the detail is actually better once we upscale the image, there's more detail in the feathers. Now, if you wanna to navigate to another part of the image, you can click and drag to that area or click on this little icon in the bottom right. And then anywhere you click in the image will zoom into that position. 
Now, this little message right here, it says AI settings such as content aware remove and masking will be updated automatically, which may cause visible changes to the results. So what does that mean? Well, for this particular image, I applied, I think, three or four different masks to do some custom dodging and burning to enhance the warbler a little bit more. And because of that, we're not actually seeing that in the preview. So those masks or any content aware remove retouching that you do will be applied once it's converted to a DNG file. And I'll show you that once we do the enhancement. So next we have estimated time, so four seconds. Next we have create stack, and I'd like to stack my enhancements with the original files. And that simply means they're going to be together in a group. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click enhance. Lightroom is going to do its magic and upscale the image for us. And once it's done, we will then see, let's go ahead and lower the thumbnail size here so we can see all of those. Actually, it's been grouped together. And if we hover over the top left here, we can see a number two. If we click on that, it's then going to show the original raw file. So we can condense or expand that group of images. So I like to do this just to make things a little bit easier and a little bit more organized by keeping everything together. All right, so let's jump into the develop module because now I wanna show you how you can improve this image even further after upscaling. Because if we zoom in, we can see that there's a lot of digital noise, so we need to remove that. And it's not really that sharp, so we need to sharpen the image as well. Now, the warbler itself is very soft and it doesn't really have a lot to do with the upscaling. It's more to do with the tight crop and the fact that he was very far away created that softness. Now, the digital noise does create some of that softness as well. So let's go ahead and fix this image. Now, real quick, before we do that, I just wanna show you that this new DNG file that we created is non-destructive. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we take a look at our crop here, if we turn on the crop tool, we can see we have access to the original image and we can recrop if needed. And all the edit settings that I applied as well as the masks were transferred to this DNG file, which means it's non-destructive. And that's because DNG files are a raw file format. All right, so to make this image even better, we're gonna go into detail and try and remove some of that noise with the luminance and the color denoise tools since we can't access the AI denoise tool because it's not compatible with DNG files. Now that is removing some of that noise, but it's also making that image softer. So I'm not sure that this option is actually going to work for this particular file because I'm making it worse than better. We can try and sharpen it with the sharpen tool here, and that's going to add some more digital artifacts and noise back into the image. So again, that's not going to help. Now, if we take a look at this other image that I upscaled 3X, we can definitely see that it's sharper and the digital noise is gone. So I'm gonna go ahead and select both of these and press the letter C to view them side by side. If I press the letter I, we can see this is the DNG file created by Lightroom. Over here, I have a TIFF file and you can definitely see there is less noise and digital artifacts and it's sharper versus the Lightroom version. And it's three times larger. So if we go back into the library module here, we have 4,200 pixels wide versus 28 versus 1,400. Now, the other thing is that you need to be aware of when you convert your image to a DNG file or you upscale in Lightroom, the file size is going to be much larger than the original. So I'm gonna right click and show this in the finder. And I'm gonna go ahead and activate the information here. We have 21.4 megabytes for the original file size. Let's take a look at this image next. This is the upscale and wow, look at that, 145 megabytes. So that's what, around seven times larger. Now let's compare that to the TIFF file. All right, so 60 megabytes. So that's three times larger, which is still better than seven times larger. All right, so the question is, are you happy with this image? 
is the quality good enough for you? If so, then you're done. You can move on. But you also have to consider the size of the file. Are you happy with a size that is seven times larger? Or would you rather have an image that is three times larger in terms of the actual size? And I believe this one is 120 megapixels. The Lightroom is 53 and the original is 13 megapixels. So you're working with a file here now that is, I believe, 10 times the resolution and it's still half the size of what Lightroom gives us, plus not to mention a better quality image. All right, so my point is, what do you want? Do you want quality and a lower size? If so, well, we can't do it in Lightroom, unfortunately. If you're okay with the size and the quality of Lightroom, then you're good to go, you can move on. But if you want to learn how to create this particular image with a better resolution, and a lower size file compared to DNG and Lightroom, check out this video tutorial next. And I'm gonna show you how I edited this image from beginning to end. So straight out of camera to this final image in upscaled 3X.